Difficult to believe, isn't it, that just yesterday this ground, now quiet and empty, was reverberating to the sounds of celebrations. It's 60 years since First Division silverware was last at Roker Park, and perhaps it's fitting that next season, the final one here, the trophy will once again be in the cabinet. It's been a remarkable transformation from a team which 12 months ago looked as if it was heading for Division 2. Then in came a charismatic scouser who took the club by the scruff of the neck and transformed them into league champions. Especially, it's meant a great lot. Obviously, we're getting bigger crowds over, and the Rocker Pie Shop has done good trade. You know, hoping that that will come again next season when them go on the Premiership. describe how we feel, I mean, those the fans are brilliant, like, but it's been a really hard season, I think we've really deserved this, so the fans, it's just brilliant. Let's give me like... Peter Reid, just... Give him a really good contract as soon as possible. Keep him at the club for life. He's he's um he's just made them go to the Premier League. Yeah, it's all his work. Best man. Got a touch, and it was turned in by Reed. Now you're red and white through and through. We had all left on the day when a savior would come out. And now we know our dreams are coming true. Michael Gray and Agnew, and on they go, there's no flag, and Sutherland are in front. 
Michael Gray score. It's catchy, I mean, it, it, you know, anything that uh, makes people smile and um, gets people laughing on the terraces is, is, is great and, and obviously the Newcastle fans have got their version, so it's, it's smashing really, I'm delighted about it. <laughs> but there weren't many smiles when he first arrived at Roca. His first manager's job had ended with the sack and there was little indication of the good times to come. That was the most difficult time and to be fair, the lads... Uh, dug in for seven games, but um, it wasn't pretty, and um, it was all about um, sheer effort, determination, and and just a, a desire to stay up. But um, there was a distinct lack of confidence within within the football club. I honestly thought we had a chance of um, getting to the playoffs, uh, but you know, to do to do what we've done is yeah, it's beyond what I thought or dreamt really. So the Premiership beckons, but for the time being, he's just enjoying the promotion and trying to ignore the advice and speculation that's already started in the press. But I read that I need to do this, I need to do that, and these are the same people who were saying I had no chance last year of going up. So, I mean, if you let me get on with the job, I'll try and sort it out, and uh, if I need any help, often I'll ask them. I'm sure I'll get some very, very good advice, because there's a lot of experts out there. There are those Peter Reid will gladly listen to, people in the game whose opinions and knowledge he values greatly. Top of the list of those is his former boss at Everton and Manchester City, now manager at Sheffield United, Howard Kendall. When I did move for him, uh, when I was at Everton, we were, we were struggling to find the £60,000, believe it or not, uh, to sign him. Sheffield Wednesday were interested in him at that time. And I phoned Peter at home when we did get the money. I think Everton changed banks to get the 60,000. And we did get the, the money. Phoned Peter, and the first words he said was uh, about bleep time. Bracewell, on again for Reid. Well played. Reid's cross, Gray! I never thought for one minute that he wouldn't really, if given the opportunity, uh, go into management because that's, that's what he wanted to do. And he is his own man, and I think that... When you, when you go into management, I think you can always, always pick up the, the things that you would do or, or what previous managers have done uh, that you would do or not do. But at the end of the day, you've got to be your own man. And I think that, um, you know, I'd like to think that I've helped him in a certain way. But it's, uh, it's down to Peter Reid and his backroom staff what they've done for Sunderland football this season. I think that what he would do when he went in into that dressing room would have been make it a happy dressing room and, and to organise a team and for the players to look forward to, to training and look forward to playing. I think that is one vital aspect of management. They've worked for 12 months, or nearly 12 months, uh, preparing for this moment in terms of getting out of this division, and they've done that. Um, so let them enjoy that first, and then the survival aspect comes next season. The similarities are obvious. They even share a love of Van Morrison. Reed's younger brother, Sean, has spent much of his career with Rochdale, but joined Bury last year. Despite the nine-year gap, they've always been close. I went to Rochdale when I was 17, and when I'd been just around the corner from Bolton, I lived with him for a couple of years, so he, had a, he looked after me. So I had a choice of going to a few clubs, and um, he just said to me, if I was you, I'd, I'd, I'd opt for them. And then, because they could be successful this year, and once again, it's been proved right, hasn't it? He? Um, so yeah, he gives me advice, and it's always important that I can always turn to him. Most players agree that perhaps their best days are actually playing. But mm. does does Peter genuinely enjoy management? I think anyone who enjoys management's going to be a little bit mad. But um, yeah, he, he loves it. Um, as you do enjoy playing, there's nothing there's nothing better than playing, but. I think when you go into management, he was he was always geared to be a manager as well, with the way he was with players and his attitude. So I think yeah, I think he's just took it naturally in the stride.
In spite of Peter's move to the northeast, the brothers have kept in touch, and Sean's heard all about the fanaticism of the Sunderland supporters. He can't believe the the way they love the football. He said he thought it was bad down here, but he said up there they're mad for, which is great because he's obviously the same as them. It does help when you get success, and I think he just says it's a massive club, and he just hopes he can continue. With it. Cheer up, Peter Reid. Does he need cheering up? Um, not when I see him, he doesn't. <laughs> He's usually quite happy when I've seen him. <laughs> but um, um, it's quite funny, isn't it? Um, I think that's just another sign that the fans have talked to him. And um, to write such a pleasant song about him is great. I suppose everybody has their theories about why he's um, so successful and what's behind Sunderland's revival, but it, it could possibly be the, the tune that they know when under the pitch, couldn't it? Yeah, but, um, I remember that he used to run out to that Everton, so... Yeah, maybe it's that's the secret. He's not he's not a very good manager, he just plays good records. <laughs> so I wonder to remember if you'd ever take up management, yeah, play Zed cards. I'll probably write that down after in case I figure. <laughs> He's going to be well happy when he sits there. <laughs> While Sean was with his club at Exeter, other members of the Reed family were at the opposite end of the country to share in their oldest boy's moment of glory. Give us a hug. How's this? How's that? <laughs> my mum and dad um, haven't been to a game. Uh, I think my dad gets a bit nervous. Um, and he doesn't like travelling that much. But uh, <clears throat> his sister's been to a few games and uh, a couple of my brothers. Uh, one lives in London, so uh, they're all thrilled. They're all absolutely thrilled about it. And um, I think a little bit surprised as well. I think if you ask anybody, uh, well, it, you wouldn't have thought that Sunderland would be now promoted and, and going into the Premiership, which is the big league. I think they're obviously delighted. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, the raffle tonight, the Bundesliga Sunderland strip, £300. We'll accept £10 notes and just put times two and put two names on the envelope. At a testimonial dinner for defender Richard Ord, everyone's in high spirits. Sunderland's players can't speak too highly of their manager and the other backroom staff he's brought in. And they give a good indication of what it is about Reid that's brought about this season's dramatic change in fortunes. I think it's just uh, his total enthusiasm and, uh, and uh, Peter Reid's a name and everybody knows exactly what he's done and, and he's a born winner and, it, and that comes across in uh, everything that we do in training and uh, with the backroom staff with uh, Brace and, uh, and Bobby Saxon, everything really is geared towards the Saturday and, uh, and team player and everybody knows exactly what they're doing. In training, you know, we have you know five sides, young versus old, and the gap is always on the, uh, the old side. And uh, he's very enthusiastic, and he hates getting beat. And if he does get beat, he gets a lip on. So you can imagine on a Saturday, uh, you know, even on a Saturday, he gets uh, very uptight. Guests of honour at the dinner are two men who've experienced both the positive and the negative aspects of managing Sunderland. It's a difficult job. We all know once you get in the Premier League, um, it, it is a very difficult task, but. You know, keep the fingers crossed and let's hope things go well for them next year. I think they've proved this season that they ought to be there, haven't they? Oh, yes. I mean, everybody we speak to say they are the best team in uh, the first division. And uh, good luck to them. No, I'm delighted for Peter because he's a good lad. Um, I've been there once. We, we went up. Uh, we weren't strong enough. We didn't invest enough on the financial side. Hopefully when Peter goes up and everything's right, then the investment's right and, and the club goes on to be where it should be. At the end of the day, he probably will get money, but Peter Reid's done a great job and I'm sure he doesn't need, need me to tell him what to do uh, with his money when he gets it. He'll have a good idea of what he wants to do and um, I just hope that they'll have some success next season. Yeah, it's very difficult now. I mean, you know, you've got people like Coventry down at the bottom who've spent 11, 12 million. So there's no guarantee if the money's there that, that you're going to do well, but it does give you a chance if, if you think you've got the right person in charge. And Peter's done a very good job, so he should be backed. And the board has backed him, even though it's faced the same accusation of stinginess made during the reigns of his predecessors. Nevertheless, its vote of confidence is not the traditional stab in the back. It's genuine. The most important person at this club is Peter Reid, and he's the main asset in this club. And as long as he's at the helm, 
uh, we have no fears about next season. Obviously, Peter needs some money to be spent, and he'll be given every penny that we can get together. You were quoted, rightly or wrongly, in the press, uh, of saying that Peter could possibly have a transfer budget of, of £10 million. Was that the correct figure, and, and, and does that promise still stand if it, if it were? We, we've never said publicly about uh, how much money is available because we're trying to take a £7 million turnover business, fund a £15 million new stadium all payable in one year, and turn it within 12 months into a £30 million plus business. And we want to give Peter lots of money and we want to be a serious football club like we were in the 30s and the 50s. And we need the cash flow and the income generation to compete at that level. So it's our ambition to give Peter as much as we can. Uh, obviously, Peter would only stay with us if we were ambitious. Uh, this new stadium makes a major statement about the city and where its football club is going. And every year in the past that the club's gone up, it's been a yo-yo team. And there have been some very good managers there at the time. And it's always because they've been under-resourced. We clearly recognise that, and hence that's the blueprint that we're mapping out now. That admission and readiness to redress it is coming off the drawing board and slowly becoming reality. It will come to fruition in the next 12 months when an industrial wasteland becomes a state-of-the-art super stadium. But while work is finally underway, the determination which got it started remains undiminished. Next year we've got to be a team, a complete rounded team, because we've got this, this year to get through before the stadium's ready and we're in with it and the supporters and the sponsors and the team and everybody have got to stay as one and we've got to go into the next season as a unit and battle through it and that's the objective. With Peter at the helm, I'm absolutely confident we're going to have a, what in our terms will be a successful year next year because if we can stand up there with the Arsenals and the Tottenham's with this sort of stadium and this sort of income, there's no reason we can't compete like they did in the 50s. But the 50s didn't have Sky, and even Sunderland's last promotion to the top division preceded the revolution which has brought such benefits on and off the pitch, where even this season's bottom club will receive a million pounds from TV contracts alone. Five um, packs phone and six mix output. The power of television in terms of the money and exposure of football, allied to the club's own marketing ventures, has suddenly made the game attractive to business and sponsors, bringing in turn yet more cash. In every possible opportunity, in and out of breaks, Duncan, we're going to try and throw as many fans and atmosphere shots in the He knows that United were fortunate, though, not for the first time. Eric Cantona got them out of trouble. They came back here, Duncan, and changed it. There was still something he couldn't do. It's perhaps not surprising that football club chairmen seem to refer more to the business than the team, where Premier League managers are measured as much by the balance sheet as results. But that's for the future. In the past hectic fortnight, it's been difficult enough for Peter Reid to find time to contemplate this season's achievement, let alone worry about what's ahead. It didn't sort of sink in until possibly uh, the, Monday, the Monday after the Stoke game. I went and just walked down to the wine bar in the arm, had two pots of coffee and just watched the whale go by. And I thought, yeah, must have made all the papers were there, so, you know, and there was some smashing pitches, but that's when it sunk in. Well, today there's more success to ponder the First Division Championship and still with a game to play. You get the feeling that Peter Reid, despite his accent and the short space of time 
he's been at the club, has become as passionately involved with Sunderland and the area as the most ardent of Roker fans. Perhaps that's got something to do with the hardcore of young players, many of whom will have watched from these very terraces, and some who will have played for Sunderland for more than half their young lives. <laughs> I was like spotted at 11 and um, I was asked to go to the School of Excellence, which I did so until I left school like at 16 and then uh, went and did the club's YDS for two years and then I was offered a professional contract. So it's, um, things have gone ever so well for me, really. Teabag, we'll help make where the teabag? Somewhere. You're going to put the sugar in? Oh, you tell Daddy he doesn't make tea. Make tea all the time, what's wrong with you? Who were your heroes? Well, it was always the forwards. I mean, um, I used to love Gary Rowell. He was a bit young at the time, but he used to score the goals, you know, and then along came uh, Marco Gabbiadini, and, um, you know, he was a terrorist hero, so he was one of my heroes. From your point of view, it's been a, a pretty good season, hasn't it? Yeah, it's went quite, went quite well for us, you know. I wasn't in, in the side at the start of the season, um, and I managed to get in. Um, Scored a few goals, you know. I'm I'm leading goal scorer at the moment, and yeah, so it's very special for me. What have been the highlights? Um, I think scoring the four goals really against Millwall, um, which put me top of the league over Christmas, was very special. You know, it was my first senior hat trick, and um, it was a special occasion. Plus scoring at Manchester United, um, I got ranks alongside the rest of them. It was a great feeling, I mean, there was 8,000 Sunderland supporters here and then to put us in the lead in the cup tie at Old Trafford, it's like, yeah, whatever we wish to do. Craig Russell will be a name that quite a few people know all over the country now. Yeah, it's been the case, you know, um, whereas before it was just the neighbours and it was around the estate, it's like, it's virtually everybody, I've got kids knocking on the door, left, right and centre photographs, you know, but you don't mind that, it's part and parcel, you know. You'd be worrying if people weren't wanting your autograph, you know. Like I was at the swim pool the other day, and a woman's approach is asking to do a presentation. I'm trying to have a swim. It's um, it's all to go along with the success of the club, you know, and long may it continue. What's it meant to you this season? It's been a bit different, you know. Um, normally it's a struggle. Um, people are talking for the wrong reasons, you know, at the bottom of the league, what's going on, this, that, and the other. But now everybody's coming and patting you on the back. So I mean, it's like a dream come true, really. I mean, it's uh, what everybody's wanted for a long time. Well, there's one thing for certain, they'll all be household names next season when they take their place in the Premiership. As you can see behind me, the party is only just beginning. No doubt it'll continue throughout the summer until next season when the real business begins again. It's been a tremendous season for us. A lot of hard work, but uh, we'll enjoy today, and no doubt that all the fans will as well. When's the last time you were on the bus? Uh, 92 Cup final. We got beaten the reception. We got them were tremendous, and having won the title, I'm no doubt they'd be even better today. Day so far, great that everyone's turned out absolutely brilliant, excellent day. Can it fall? Can you not? Brilliant. Look at the crowd, look at the crowd, man. Look at the millions. Fill that stadium next year, fill it without a doubt. Like every Christmas day, everyone in the one. It's brilliant. It's unbelievable. It is. I was, I was at the ground last night, though. Oh, I don't know what time we left, but great. It's what we waited for, isn't it?
magnificent, tremendous uh, but they deserved it for so long and to get the Premier League has been uh, Oh, yeah, exactly, yeah. Enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah. Marco, BBC Television, what do you make of today? Oh, oh, fantastic. Yeah, I mean, you can't believe it, you know what I mean? Great turnout, I mean, we deserved it, you know, but um, the fans have ever seen it, you know, it's like playing with 12 men all season. They've been absolutely brilliant. Yeah. What, what about all this? What do you make of all this? Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real smashing day and uh, just delighted for, for everybody in the club, the players and the families and of course the supporters. It's a real, yeah, it's a great day. Peter is so enthusiastic and a natural leader. He makes the club and the work and the pressures so much more enjoyable. When you look at him when he's on the bench on a Saturday afternoon, I mean, he's shouting and screaming at the lads, but that's just the way he is, you know, he gets so involved in the game and he's just, will to win, it's just unbelievable. To do what we've done in the space of time, um, I just think it's... I never, I never think, we, I never thought we'd do it, and, and we've done it. And I just think it's a tremendous achievement. As a manager, you get that extra special thrill. I mean, I, I never thought, I never thought you, you could feel like this. When it's not always raining, there'll be days like this. When there's no one complaining, there'll be days like this. Everything falls into place like the flick of a switch. Well, my mama told me there'd be days like this When you don't need to worry There'll be days like this When no one's in a hurry There'll be days like this When you don't get betrayed By that old Judas kiss Oh, my mama told me There'll be days like this When you don't need an answer, there'll be days like this. When you don't need a chance, there'll be days like this. When all the parts of the puzzle start to look like they fit, then I must remember there'll be days like this. Tricks it. When you don't have no freeloaders, I can get their kicks it. Well, that's nobody's business, the way that you want to live. I just have to remember, there'll be days like this. And no one steps on my dreams, there'll be days like this. When people understand what I mean, there'll be days like this. When you ring out the changes of how everything is Well, my mama told me there'll be days like this Told me there'll be days like this. 